Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Choose One Four Star Servant ticket that came with the, I believe it's 12 million? Yeah, 12 million download campaign. Give a little bit of advice for people who maybe don't know what unit to pick, uh, stuff like that. So if you end up liking this video or you find it helpful, you can always leave a like. It helps me a whole bunch. Um, you can subscribe to me if you want some more Fate stuff. I do a bunch of other stuff as well. And comment and tell me how who you're thinking for this ticket. Or if you're still undecided, you know, let me know. I'm glad to hear it. Anyway, what is this ticket and why are we getting it? So basically, there's a 12 million download campaign going on. I did not notice that there was a giant thing that said 12 million download here until I looked at it. Um, and inside of it, we get a ticket. Uh, the ticket was given out, started giving out on the 5th, and on the by the 11th, at this time, I forget, it's different for everyone else, so check your time zones. Basically, it's on the reset on the 11th of November. You won't be able to get the ticket anymore, but you can exchange it. The exchange starts from the 6th to the 13th, at least for me it does. Um, and you can choose from 54 different servants. Basically, every 4-star unit in the game is in this ticket, at least at this current point in NA. The only ones that aren't on it are free to play uh, four stars because you wouldn't even be able to awaken them, so you don't really have a choice of picking them. So it can be oh no, it can be a little bit tough to choose who to pick from because there's 54 different uh, types of servants. There's limited servants, story lock servants, regular servants, um, and they're all various levels of different some people pick for who they want the most some people pick for gameplay i can tell you right now by the way if you're someone who's like i'm torn between picking someone i love or picking someone who would be beneficial to my box always pick the character that you love and i'm gonna say that because fake grand order is a game all about characters and i think it's silly not to deny yourself um a good character kind of i think that's the way i see it anyway deny 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 do to deny yourself a character that you love so much just because you want to get a little bit stronger is, I think, um, a fool's errand. So, if there's a servant on this list that you just absolutely love, I say pick that one. Um, and another thing, which is something that's bare to mention, if you're someone who has a brand new account and you did not re-roll for Herc, you can totally just pick Heracles right here. Um, Heracles is the unit a lot of people say you should re-roll for if you are re-rolling. But if you have an account and you don't want to re-roll because the re-roll process is really bad and it sucks and it takes forever, you can just pick him with the ticket and he's a perfectly fine selection for the ticket. So that's something to remember. Uh, the other thing I mentioned is that there are limited units. Uh, limited and story locked from this point on I'm just going to say limited. Um, because story locked is basically limited with extra steps. Story locked means that they can only appear on banners that are specific to the story. Um, so for example, right here, Saber Alter, Gaiwen, Nero, Tristan, uh, Lancer Alter, um, and a couple others on here are story locked, meaning you won't get them in the general pool when you're summoning. Um, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are kind of just, you get them because you like the character a whole bunch. I usually pick limited units. I'm not picking one this year who's limited for reasons. Um, but it's a perfectly valid idea if you want to pick a unit that you just know is going to be extremely hard to pick. Like, a lot of people love Nero, but Nero's servant is extremely hard to pull. Um, so you might want to try and get her. So let me just quickly show you some key highlights of the units. Um, I can't go over all 54, <laughs> uh, because that would be literally a fool's errand and this video would be over an hour long. So I'm just going to very quickly look through all of them and kind of tell you my thoughts about who would be a pretty good t pick ticket pick. Pick a tick? What? Ticket pick. There we go. So first we got Saber Alter. She is story locked and she's kind of like a mini version of the um, five star Saber. Um, she she definitely needs a lot of rank ups and she's not as good as the five star version of it. But she does come with a very special costume that we will get eventually in NA. We don't have it currently, but we will get it eventually. The Shinjuku costume. So that's left something to look forward to. So if you really like Saber a whole bunch, that's definitely a pretty good unit to pick up. Uh, Guy Wynn is a Buster Gorilla. He's also story locked. So if you love Buster memes, he's a perfectly good person to pick up. Um, not a lot of people will pick up Dion, and it's because Dion is a taunt unit. So you really don't have, I would say for about 90% of all events and everything, you will never pick Dion as your Saber. 
Um, but for Challenge Quest, Dion is fantastic. The most recent um, Guild Fest, I was able to win a whole bunch of um, Challenge Quest because of Dion. Because Dion's taunting is next level good. Um, next, Nero, I'd, like I said, a story lock. She's also an AoE Saber, who is Arts. So currently in NA, the only art support you really have is Tamamo. Um, so we will be a while till we get Castoria, but even with Tamamo, she's perfectly solid. Um, Yu Yu-Gi-Oh, I call him Old Man Sit because he's just an old man that likes to sit a whole bunch. I believe he is story locked and he is a single target. Yeah, he is story locked and single target arts saber. Um, he's pretty solid as far as single target. I have both him and Lancelot, and I use Lancelot a lot more because I like Lancelot's kind of crit build. So if you're looking for a single target, um, Arts Saber, these two are pretty good. Um, I like Lancelot a whole bunch. Um, that's my current feeling for him. Rama needs buffs. That's how I... I love Rama. He has great animations, but he needs buffs for sure. Um, next we got Tomoe. Tomoe is a single target archer. Uh, extremely cute. Very strong, very solid. Not pretty good pick, I would say. Um, Atalanta is very good with Scotty because you can do quick farming with her and she has pretty good NP gain. I will say from using her, there are certain bosses that you kind of wish she dealt a little bit more damage. So definitely a unit I feel that re doesn't require NP2, but for some event bosses that just have crazy HP or specific, like the most recent Oni Land, there were a lot of, a lot of enemies with a lot of HP and she ended up coming up short for me. But that wouldn't have been the case if I had her at a higher NP level. But either way, still a very solid all-around um, quick archer to use with Scotty. Uh, Emiya is the other unit besides Herc. If you are a brand new player that you should reroll for. He's a perfectly good substitute if you don't get Herc, but you got Emiya in another unit. You're kind of good to roll with that account. And the reason Emiya is so good is that they just won't stop buffing him. <laughs> He's been crazy buffed to the point where now one of his skill is one of his skills got double buffed, and now he can change his noble phantasm from either a buster or an arts uh, or an arts uh, noble phantasm. So let me just quickly show it right here. Third skill, see trace on. Uh, he selects own NP command cards type between arts or buster for one turn, and then he also gets this crazy at level ten buff of fifty percent for one turn. Um, him being arts would be very good for this exact reason that I'm about to show you. It's because he hits 10 times and hits are very important for noble phantasms to get, um, if you ever wondered why certain quick servants are better than others for farming with quick, the reason is, is that they have multiple hits in their noble phantasm. So for each of these hits, he's also gaining back NP per hit. So every, so at a certain point, you're dealing so much damage that once you hit enter overkill, it should be one, I think it's possible to get 300% arts with him if you have him MP5 from just using his um, noble phantasm if it's arts. That's how crazy good he is, so. Someone who can you can definitely look forward to, someone who will, who ages well with the game, and he also has used a whole bunch for events, so he gets a lot of event bonuses as well. Uh, Tristan is limited. Tristan does get a lot of love. Um, he is a single target archer who is quick, who can go past evasion. Um, his skills are pretty fun, I think. At least I think they're pretty fun. They're like a good mixture of kind of support type, um, support and debuffing type of skills. Um, probably only really good for when you're in a challenging boss fight, so not really a lot of use for him uh, outside of that, but he is story locked and I kind of like him, so that's why I want to mention him. Um, Chiron is also a quick, I believe he is quick AoE though, I don't know, he is arts, uh, arts anti-unit, so just once, but he removes all the defensive buffs. The reason I wanted to mention him is because he has a pretty good support skill here, um, Gives one ally quick performance arts and buster. 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%. The only thing he doesn't give is NP gain. He does give crit stars, though. He's a very different kind of unit. Um, again, not usually someone's first pick, but if you're someone who's like, I kind of like the idea of using them. I think with enough buildup, he's pretty solid. Um, this specific Lancer is story locked, and I'm pretty sure is better than the five-star version of her. This is like the exact opposite of the altar, where the altar is not as good as the five star version of her. This altar is better than the five star in the banner, so 
it's something to kind of think about when you're if you're going to choose them. Now here's a good two these two right here, Bravati and Valkyrie are two of the best. Um, one yeah of the three, it is them, and then it is uh, the extremely angry man that I can't remember, the Count of Monte Cristo. No, <laughs> that's not his name, Dantes. There you go. Um, they have excellent NP gain due to their skills, and they're also able to increase their MP gauges as well, and they can deal a whole bunch of damage. Um, Parvati, I know for a fact, was able to NP loop before Scotty was a thing. So before any of that kind of Scotty loop kind of started, she was already kind of looping by herself. So that should tell you how good she is at doing it. Now, both of these units are really solid. Um, Valkyrie has the ability to, I think, remove defensive buffs. No, removes evasion. Ignores evasion, my bad. Not the... Uh, removes it. Um, the only real... <laughs> so really, they're very similar. Uh, they fill a similar role. The only thing that's different is that Parvati requires different materials to um, get her skills up. So you can see right here. Um, these skills... I think these are easier to get than what... Um, Valkyrie is asking because Valkyries are especially if you're dealt with Scotty's farming yeah it's a little bit of newer stuff so even when they're ascension they can be a bit of a pain in the butt like 20 of these for all three skills that would require you to have 60 of them and then also proof of heroes can be kind of a pain in the butt to get as well so it's something to kind of keep in mind with them I think both of them are really good though uh Fion this is a unit no one will ever tell you is good the people who tell you he is bad aren't aware that he is one of the best um, arts lancers due to Castoria because, okay, what's the nicest way I can say this without potentially offending a Fion fan? Fion is an unlikable character. <laughs> He's not really someone who many people would consider their favorite. Of course, there are some people who absolutely love him, but but due to his like low popularity, they just constantly buff him. Like, look, this buff is insane. This buff is insane. I think he got a buff to his NP, which is very good. And he hits three times and he's able to kind of like loop pretty good because of that. So um, he's never going to be a unit anyone will pick with the ticket. I've kind of understood that. But if someone tries to tell you that Fion is bad and that you should use him for a like mana prism or something, don't listen to them. Keep him because there is going to come a time where Fion will have his day in the sun and you'll be happy to have him if you specifically have Castoria and Tumbamo and stuff like that. So something to keep in mind. Um, of these writers, none of them are very, like not, they're not that they're bad. It's just they're, they're kind of okay. Like I don't really, I think Astolfo is the only one that can kind of quick farm with Scotty. And even then I think it's kind of random at sometimes. Um, but out of all of them, Astolfo is I think the best one of them. So if you love Astolfo, get him. Get your dude. Get your cute looking dude. Um, next, uh, casters. So, Helena and Gilgamesh are pretty good support units. They're not like top tier in terms of like, you know, they're not like Waver, um, Merlin, and Scotty and NA, where they're able to do just crazy loops with two of them. No, they're not really built that way. But they can provide a lot of nice support, especially for someone who can't really afford to have Merlin or Waver or Scotty, someone like that. They can be pretty decent. I, and she has an uh, MP battery that goes 20% to the entire team. Gilgamesh is kind of an art supporter, so if you don't have Tamamo, you can kind of use him with Tamamo if you want. And he also has a pretty decent um, AoE attack that comes with it as well. Um... <clears throat> Thomas Edison is a really weird unit. Um, I kind of like him because he's a very weird support. The reason I say he's a weird support is because of this skill right here. So he has the ability to overcharge one ally's NP by two stages. What does that mean? So here's an overcharge effect. Here's it at stage one, and it can go to 300%. So regularly, a unit can't get to 500% unless they're specifically in a chain with other noble phantasms. But with this ability, you would be able to get some of the higher um, overcharge effects. It is pretty fun. It's kind of one of those units that you kind of want to play with to um, just kind of have fun. So it's something to keep in mind for him. Um, Naito is an extremely good 
farming unit because she has the ability. She has this ability right here. Let me show you. The second skill charges her own MP gauge. At level 8, it gets to 102% charge. At level 1, it's 60%. But at level 8, it gets 122% charge. If you only have her at MP1, that's all you need, really, to be able to use this Noble Phantasm. It also is an insta-death Noble Phantasm. Combined with this skill right here, she makes it so you can farm hands very easily. And it's kind of one of those units that if you're farming, it is kind of a little bit RNG focused, but still, she's still very, very good at her job, even with that like little caveat I've said, um, especially for something like a hand farming where you don't have to really worry about type advantage or disadvantage because they're just all insta dying, right? Um, next, we have the Queen of Sheba. She, I like to bring her up because there's not a lot of single target casters in the game. She's one of them. Uh, she's really solid. I think the only other two single target casters are um, that are of gold rank, which is four and five star, are um, Songzong and Ilya. Yeah, those are the other two. So there's not many, to be fair, there's not a lot of uses for a single target caster. But for example, the most recent challenge quest used a single target caster. She was fantastic for that. She was super helpful, and if you didn't have her, it was kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, next, we have Medea. She has story lock. She's a healer. She's not the greatest. She's not the worst, but she is a healer. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with my playstyle. I never really have much use for um, healer type units, but there are certain challenge quests where having this kind of ability to heal, like like I just mentioned, like I don't really use her all that much. The most recent recent time I used her, a challenge quest. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. Um, assassins, there's not really many that pop up to me. I think Donzo is story locked. Yes, she is. Um, I picked Donzo with my ticket last time because she's story locked and she's extremely cute and I love her and that's why I picked her. So there's that. Uh, for Berserkers, of course, everyone's favorite is Herc. Uh, so Lancelot can be used with Scotty, but it's not recommended unless he is NP2. So if you have a Scotty and you're looking for a Berserker, quick AoE, um... He's not the greatest if you only have him NP1. You really need NP2 or higher. Even mine's at NP4, and there are certain situations where he doesn't get 100% charge that I need him to. Um, so it's kind of good to remember that. I bring him up because, honestly, he is one of the best farmers because, you know, Berserkers and Quick, you're able to kill basically everything that is not, I think, Avenger. <laughs> um... No, not Avenger. It is Foreigner. And there's not a lot of Foreigner games that are in the Foreigners in the game. Um, there's not a lot of nodes that require you to kill Foreigner, so it doesn't end up being that much of an issue. The more, though recently there have been a little bit more of that, but, you know, not too many. Um, so yeah, if you are looking for an NP2, it's a pretty good investment. If you're only in it for NP1 and you have Scotty, you might be better off kind of getting another one of the quick... Um, AoEs who are better at the job than poor Sir Lancelot over here. Um, and finally for Avengers, we have Gorgon who is story locked and we have the Avenger of Shinjuku. Avenger of Shinjuku is a single target. He kind of needs buffs is what I kind of feel about him personally. And Gorgon can be pretty good. The only problem with Gorgon is that there's not a, there's not a lot of uses <laughs> Um, where you are suddenly fighting a ruler and you kind of need to use a Avenger. She's not like Dantes, where Dantes has great um, NP gain and works well with Scotty. All Gorgon has really is Merlin, so you need big boy damage. But if there's ever a boss, specifically a ruler, who's at the end of the node, it would be nice to kind of have Gorgon. I've definitely used mine a couple of times where there was a, like, a Gene the Arc at the end and I used Gorgon as my finisher. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of the ticket in a nutshell. I've kind of highlighted some of the good units. If it was me, I'm going with Parvati because I need a quick AoE unit. For you, kind of look at, again, look at your box, look at what you need, look at the class that you need most. If you need a Rider, I would suggest not checking, picking Rider at all. If you need another one of the other ones, I think it's, you got some pretty solid choices. Um... So yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, happy ticket picking, everyone. And remember, if there's a unit on here that you just absolutely love, pick them. I mean, there's a lot of other units here that I just don't have time to go into it a whole deep. Like, Liz is funny when you use her with a um, female team and stuff like that. 
Um, there's a lot of units that just have other builds that you can be used with other units, but that's a kind of a quick overview view of just looking at dudes who are just like, yeah, good. But then there's other ones that, you know, can be good under certain teams. So anyway, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. It's fucking hot, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.